moment of divine turnaround. Thank you, we thank you for this moment of divine preservation. Thank we thank you so much, Lord, for this moment, oh God, you, of destiny encounter. You, we give you praise. Amen. We give you praise. Amen. You're welcome, blessed spirit of the living God. Amen. You're welcome. You're welcome. We welcome into this place. Hallelujah. We welcome you, oh Lord, again and again. Amen. Thank you, Abba Father, you, for everyone all over the world. That you have a mind to touch tonight. Amen. That's so. That individual, that family, that you are going to step into their family tonight Amen. to do something unique, to heal, to deliver, and to set free. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, we thank you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah. Blessed be your holy name. Amen. We trust you, O oh Lord, for the supernatural. Amen. Supernatural. This Amen. release of the supernatural. Amen. The manifestation of the supernatural. Amen. We trust in you. Amen. We depend on you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have your way. Amen. Have your way. Amen. Have your way. Amen. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a great joy to be here again to be alive. In the presence of the Lord, beholding the beauty of the Lord and inquiring in His temple. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. I believe tonight is somebody's night. night. The Lord is going to reach out to you. The Lord is going to visit you and do the incredible in your life. Amen. I want to back on with you wherever you are watching from not to take this service of tonight for granted I don't want you to take this meeting for granted I want your heart to be open I want your heart to be set let your heart be on the altar tonight because Jesus Christ himself is going to touch you he's going to meet you at the point of your need in the mighty name of Jesus Christ you are receiving wholeness tonight in everything that God has started in your life Tonight, my God is going to complete it Amen. in the wonderful name Amen. of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be God forever. Hallelujah. We are not going to waste time tonight. Hallelujah. Open your Bible to the book of John, chapter 8. The book of John, chapter 8. Like we all have said the the title of this message says, Free indeed. Free indeed. You can announce it to yourself and say, I am free indeed. Hallelujah. Say, I am free indeed. I am free indeed. Because the Son of Man has set me free. I am free indeed. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John chapter 8, and we're going to read from verse 36. John 
John chapter 8. Okay, I'll just read from verse 31. Just listen attentively. He said, Night, you're going to enjoy. Your eyes are going to be opened. You're going to receive something from the Lord. And you're going to make amendments in your life where you need to make amendments. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. One thing is sure, you must receive something from God tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. John chapter 8, verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's seed, and we are never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Very, very, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abided not in the house forever, but the son abided ever or forever. If the son of if the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me, because my world had no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and do that which you have seen with your father. And you, you do that which you have seen with your father. That's right. Verse 38, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. <laughs> Verse 39, they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If you were Abraham's children, you would not do the works of, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me. A man that had told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Abraham is not like that. You do the deeds of your father. Then said they unto him, We are not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? You are of your father, the devil. <laughs> and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinced me of sin? And if I say the truth, you do. Why do you not believe me? He that is of God beareth God's words. Heareth God's words. You therefore hear them not because you are not of God. We we'll just stop there, you know. This was a conversation between Jesus and some of the Jews. They claim to be God's, God's um, to be Abraham's children. If you are trying to be religious with Christ, you claim to be a child of Abraham, but you don't have what Abraham has. Because then we are thinking that if we are Jews, if we are from the lineage of Abraham, because Abraham is a member of our lineage, that that is what makes us the son or the seed of Abraham. That Abraham is our father by genealogy. Then we are claiming that that is what makes them, you know, the children of Abraham. Or is that somebody will be saying, ah, yeah. Because I am in, in, in Nigeria or because I am in, in Ireland. So, one righteous man that lives in Ireland is my father or is my brother. It doesn't work that way. Because that man is Irish or that man is Nigerian does not make him your father. 
Because that man is from Israel, does not make you, does not make him your father. And Jesus was trying to let them know that if you are truly Abraham's children, there is a criteria, there is a qualification, there is something that qualifies you to become the child of Abraham. You are not the child of Abraham because of genealogy or because of the you know, ancestral roots. So there is something that is supposed to make you a bona fide member of the Abrahamic you know, lineage. How do you do it? And then Jesus, as they were talking, Jesus was talking to them and saying, Your father, your father. They never knew who Jesus was referring to as their father. They thought that Jesus was referring to Abraham. But when Jesus finally told them, You guys are not like Abraham. You are like your father, the devil. He made it clear for them to understand. You are your father, the devil. Why did Jesus call their father the devil? Because they were sinners. Jesus told them, Abraham, you came to be your father, did not do what you guys are trying to do. What are they trying to do? Jesus said, you want to kill me? You want to stop me? Why? Because I told you the truth. You hate the truth. You are bitter about the truth. How then will you claim to be the son or the daughter of Abraham? You are not. Because you are doing evil. That is what makes you a son or a child of the devil. Jesus was so practical. Jesus was so clear there. He said, if you are Abraham's children, you will do the works of Abraham. What are the works of Abraham? What are the things that Abraham did? What did he do? What can you say about Abraham? What was his lifestyle like? And I think that Abraham fulfilled this three major things that God is always talking about, about charity, hope, and faith. Charity, hope, and faith. The life of Father Abraham was a life of charity, a life of hope, and a life of faith. Abraham was a lover. He was a man given to hospitality. He loved people. He was given to hospitality to the extent that he ministered out to God himself. He gave God food. He ministered to God. And that opened up the destiny of Father Abraham. So he said, Jesus told him, if you are a child of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. You will be a man of love. You will be a man of hope. And you will be a man of faith. These three things are the things we found in Father Abraham. He was a man of hope. The Bible said, Abraham against hope, he believed in hope. He was a man that hoped unto the promises of God. He was a man that, did, that never staggered at the promises of God. He hoped unto God. He, his hope was in God. His trust was in God. He believed God. He hoped in God until he received the promise that God made to him. So in the words of Abraham, Abraham was a man of hope. Abraham was a man of faith. Remember, it was Abraham that God told God showed him the sky and said, Look at the stars in the heaven. Can you count the number of the stars in the heaven? Abraham said, No, I cannot count them. God told him, That is how your descendants, that is how numerous your children are going to be. And the Bible said, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. He believed God. Everything God told Abraham. When God told Abraham, leave your father's house and go to a place where I'm going to send you, where I'm going to tell you about. Abraham packed his load and left his father's house as God stood to him. He obeyed God, not knowing where he was going. He believed God. He was living a life of faith. He was walking in faith. The works of Abraham is a work of faith. When God told Abraham to sacrifice the only son that he had, that is called Isaac, Abraham cried his only because the only only he belongs son and went to Mount Moriah to go and sacrifice Isaac. The work of Abraham is a work of faith. Abraham was a man of faith. He was a man of love. He was a man given to hospitality. He was a man of hope. He was always hoping in God and depending on God and waiting patiently on the promises of God. Somebody say Amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. So Jesus Christ began to tell them, if you say that you are a child of Abraham, you have to behave like Abraham. 
You need to be a man of love, a woman of love. You need to be a man of faith, a woman of faith. You need to be a man of hope, a woman of hope. You need to be given to hospitality. You need to be a lover of God. And to sum everything up. For you to be, you know, <laughs> imputed or to be crafted into the family or the family of Abraham, you need number one is to know Jesus. To know Jesus. Because Jesus is a doorway. Jesus is a, is a access to it. You don't know Abraham until you are born again, until you receive Jesus. The Bible says we as Isaac, we are Abraham's seed. The connection between you and Abraham is Jesus Christ. Until you are born again, you don't know who Abraham is. Even if Abraham is your next door neighbor, even if Abraham is your next door neighbor, you don't know him, he's not your father. You cannot claim to be the seed of Abraham if you don't know Jesus. Jesus is the access route to Abraham and the Abrahamic covenant. So that was why Jesus was answering them and said, How dare you say you are is the children of Abraham and you want to kill me, number one? You are a murderer. You came to be the seed of Abraham. You came to be the child of Abraham. And you are a murderer. Number two, you, they were full of hatred. They hated Jesus. They were full of hatred. They were murderers. They hated Jesus. They hated the truth. Jesus was telling them the truth. They hated the truth. They do not want to hear the word of God. They hated the truth. And they were self-righteous. They were trying to justify themselves by self-righteousness. Hallelujah. But Jesus told them, all those things cannot save you. All those things cannot make you, does not make you to be the children of Abraham. You are the children of the devil. Jesus told them, because of your acts, because of your actions, because of your, the dirtiness of your thoughts and your imaginations, you are the child of the devil. Because the children of God will not behave the way you are behaving. How can you see me, a man that wants to tell you the truth and you want to kill me and you are claiming to be son of Abraham? You are not. If you are the child of Abraham, you must be, the works of Abraham must be proceeding in your life. You must be a lover of God. You must be a friend of God. You must be a, a child of hope. Somebody give it to hope. Not hopelessness. Hope in God. Hope in the word of God. You will be full of hospitality. Helping people and helping the needy. You must do the words of Abraham. Like I said, the first step, you have to know Jesus. Because that is what connects you. Or that is who connects you to the Abrahamic covenant. It is Jesus that connects you to Abraham that makes you, you know, to be saying that Abraham is your father. It is only Jesus. So Jesus was speaking to them. They were not understanding what Christ was saying. Jesus is the door. He is the truth. And they are busy there fighting against the truth. That is what so many things we are seeing around the world today. People do not want to surrender their life to Christ. People are full of arguments. People argue, argue, and argue, and argue. You will tell them how to be saved. You will tell them what you need to be saved. They still want to carry bondages and baggages upon themselves. These folks are trying to justify themselves by self-righteousness. Instead of simply saying, they would have asked and said, Master, please help us. Show us the Father. They would have said, Jesus, please show us the truth. They would have said, Jesus, please, we want to know the Father. Please help us to know the truth. But they were busy criticizing Jesus. They were busy criticizing him to the extent that they were, they were trying to kill him. But Jesus escaped for his life. He told them, if you are sons and daughters of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. But he told them, you want to kill me? You want to slaughter me because I told you the truth? You are not the seed of Abraham. And he called them that their father is the devil because of what they were doing. So, child of God, you are not a seed of Abraham because you are, you are born in Israel. Abraham might be your next door neighbor, yet he's not your father. He does not know you. If you don't have Christ, you cannot be the seed of Abraham. If you don't have Jesus, you cannot be called the seed of Abraham. 
It is the connection between you and Christ that opens the doorway for you to become, you know, the seed of Abraham. Somebody say, Amen. amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. So that is what we are trying to establish today for us to know. All over the world, you see a lot of people, people say, I'm born again, I'm a child of God, I'm this, I'm a child of Abraham, but their character is not showing it. Their lifestyle is not showing it. People are full of envy, people are full of bitterness, people are full of anger, people are full of unforgiveness. One of the things as I was getting ready for the service, the Spirit of God was bearing it, you know, was saying something in my heart. He says, so many times, altar we always major in making an altar call for salvation. He said, it is high time we we'll start making an altar call for people who want to forgive those who have offended them. Very important. Because that's where we stop. We just make altar call who want to be saved and all those things. But there are people in the church, there are members of the body of the body of who came to members of the body of Christ that are full of unforgiveness and bitterness and malice and hatred and wickedness. He said it's high time you start making an altar call for people who want to forgive those who have offended them. You will be amazed what is happening in our world. You will be amazed what is happening in the body of Christ. It's high time. You don't stop and make an altar call and say, those who want to give their life to Jesus, please, when we are making an altar call, make an altar call, those who have offended people, those who have harboring unforgiveness and malice in their hearts, tell them to come and to forgive others. That is one of the reasons why so many blessings and prayers are not being answered. So many blessings are not coming down from heaven because of this sin of unforgiveness, because of malice, because of hatred, because of wickedness, and the ways are blocked, and God has nothing to do about it. You see, everybody can see people crowded everywhere in the church, but how many people are really walking in love? How many really love one another? Everyone claims to love God, everyone claims to love one another, but you don't show it. People don't show it. It's terrible the thing that is happening in our world. It's terrible the thing that is happening in our world. The Lord God Almighty is going to help us. He's going to save us in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to the name of God. So that was a dialogue between Jesus and some of the Jews. They're trying to justify themselves and they are the sons of Abraham. But Jesus told them, no, 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 no. You are not God's, you are not Abraham's children yet. Because you don't know Christ. Because they thought because of genealogy or because of lineage that they are bona fide members of Abraham's children. We are reading from the book of um, John chapter 8. John chapter 8 and from verse 31. Jesus told them because of their acts, because of their action, because of their character, you are the son of devil. Jesus said that devil is your father because of the way they were behaving. He told them, you want to kill me. You hate the truth and you want to kill me. How then will you claim that you are a seed of Abraham? You are not. You are not. The same thing God is speaking to all of us today. If we are claiming to become God's children, you know, God says something, he says, how can you say you love God? When you cannot love, when you don't love your neighbor that you can see, how will you claim to love God who you do not see? And then you you claim to love God. The proof that you love God is loving your neighbor. That's the proof that you love God. That's the proof that you love God. Loving your neighbor, that's the first proof that you love God. The Lord is going to help us. In the name of Jesus. We are talking about a, a considering a thing tonight that is saying free indeed. Free indeed. Free indeed. Verse 36, he said, if the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. If the son. First of all, Jesus said in verse 35, a servant abided not in the house forever, but the son abided forever. There is a limited time for the servant to stay in the house. 
If someone can stay for a limited time and he can, he can be asked to excuse the family, but the son, the son is the heir apparent to the house. So Jesus Christ said, He is the son. He is the one that has the bona fide right to set free everything that belongs to the Father belongs to Jesus. He is the heir apparent to the throne of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If the Son shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. He's the only one that has the right. He's the only one that has the ability. He's the only one that has the capability to make such statement. No one can make that statement and say, if I make you free, you'll be free indeed. It is only Jesus. He's the only one that has the key of David that opens and no man can shut. And when he shut, no man can be able to open. He's the one that has the keys of hell and of death. Hallelujah. He's the only one. And he is called the Son of God. He is the Son of God. And if the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Free from what? Not only free from sin. Not only free from condemnation. But free from any kind of bondage. Free from any kind of affliction. Free from any kind of sickness or disease. The Son of Man has the ability, has the power to set you free. Somebody say Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Amen. Have you forgotten what he did to the young man that was, you know, tied and buffeted by demons? Just one word, all the demons let him go. Have you forgotten Jesus and the top of Lazarus? In Lazarus, a man that stayed there dead for, ten, for three days. Jesus came there. The Son of God came. Lose him and let him go. Lazarus come forth. And the man that was dead came back alive. He is the Son of God. He's the only one that has the right. He's the only one that has the power to say such things. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Have you forgotten about the woman that was bent? Bowed down and bent. And Jesus met the woman. Call her the daughter of Abraham. So what is the problem with this daughter of Abraham? And Jesus told her, Woman, thou art loose. And immediately the woman was loose. Why? Because Jesus he is the Son of God. If the Son of God shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. Free from anything. Free from curses. Free from spell. Free from diabolic powers. Free from occulting powers. If the Son of God shall set you free, you shall be free indeed tonight. Somebody will be free tonight. In the name of Jesus. For whatever thing that is holding you bound, anything that is tying you down tonight, you shall be free. In the name of Jesus. The Son of God will speak the word tonight. The Son of God will decree tonight, and you shall be free. And you shall be free indeed. In the name of Jesus. Free indeed means free completely. Free completely, you are free, and you are free completely. Hallelujah. It talks about the permanent recovery, permanent healing, permanent wholeness, permanent recovery, permanent restoration, permanent rakisik attacking, permanent dokushiyadalamaha, complete wholeness, complete breakthrough, complete miracle, wholeness, free indeed. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. You will be sudden by and shall set you free. You shall be free indeed. You shall be free indeed. Look at my targets tonight. By the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Our target tonight as people That have been injected diseases or viruses into their life, into their bloodstream in the dream. Some people that have been injected in the dream. You know, Jesus says something say, while men slept, the enemy came to sow tears. Satan wants to come to plant seed. A devilish demonic seed, terrible, destructive seed when people are sleeping off. He comes to plant seed that is if he is given access in a place where there is no fire burning. So those category of people God has sent me to you today. 
people that the enemy have injected viruses, injected diseases into their bloodstream through the dream. Through the dream. Some people, it happens through what they eat, what they eat in the dream. Some of them, they, some of them are giving injection, real injection in the dream. Syringe, injected something into them in the dream. Sometimes so many of them they inject HIV, they inject AIDS, they inject all kinds of viruses into people's lives. That is how wicked, wicked the wicked is. That's number one. Number two is hereditary our ancestral disease that is flowing through the bloodline. Hereditary or ancestral diseases flowing through the bloodline. We are what we want to challenge them tonight. We want to tackle them tonight. The Son of God wants to give us freedom tonight. Hereditary sicknesses, ancestral disease that is flowing through the bloodline. Number three. There is sickness or disease that people contacted by natural contact. You just contacted it from people. Whether by association, you just contacted it. Some people who like to wear the same dresses, you dress with other people, people who have worn a dress and they sweated on the dress, you take the dress and still put on, you carry their disease. You take their disease. Some people will try to use the same towel with different kind of people sharing the same kind of towel after bathing. You catch all kinds of disease. Number one, viruses and diseases fired into your bloodstream in the dream. Number two is hereditary sicknesses, things that are coming from your bloodline, from your ancestors. Diseases from your ancestors trying to disturb your destiny. Jehovah is our mercy tonight. Sicknesses or diseases by contact. By contact. And then the last one sicknesses or disease that was fired into you like an arrow. There is an arrow they call the arrow of sickness, arrow of infirmity, arrow of infirmity. That's number four. The arrow of infirmity fired into you. Arrow of infirmity. You know in the book of Psalms, the Bible talks about arrows that fly by day. The pestilence that stalks in darkness, the destruction that wasted at noon day. There are arrows that fly both by day. <laughs> Pestilence that stalks in darkness, stalkers in the in the night. Arrows have been fired by satanic powers that is causing all kinds of problems, all kinds of affliction, all kinds of diseases, all kinds of things. You want to say, how did I get this? In? How did this thing come to me? I don't know where it is coming from. It's an enemy has done that. It's an arrow fired by the devil. Arrow fired by the forces of darkness. But tonight, the Son of God will do something tonight. The Son of God will do something tonight. Jesus, the Son of God will do something tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to the Lamb of God. We are considering a title called Free Indeed. Free Indeed. I want to be free, completely free indeed. If the Son of God set you free, you shall be free indeed. And then it's reminding me that some of some people it might be freedom from mental issues, heart problem, all kinds of affliction. You need to be free. You need to be free. Spirit of infirmity, spirit of insanity. We need to be free. The Son of God. We depend on Him to set us free. To set us free. He is the sweetest rose of Sharon who came to set us free. Jesus, 
Jesus is everything to me and it's all the world to me. Jesus, Jesus, you are the Son of God. Jesus, Jesus, the precious Son of God. You are the sweetest rose of Sharon who came to set us free. Jesus, Jesus is everything to me. And it's all the world to me. And it's all the world to me. And it's all the world to me. He has the power. He has the right. He has the ability. He has the capability to set anyone free from any kind of bondage. Any kind of affliction. Especially those who believe in him. Especially those who look upon him. He has the power. He has the ability to set them free. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. One of the ways by which the Son of God sets us free is through the ministry of the Holy Communion. The ministry of the Holy Communion. His flesh and His blood. His flesh and His blood. There are three powerful things that just dropped in my spirit mouth today. He says, The blood of Jesus is precious. The blood of Jesus is perfect. And the blood of Jesus is powerful. The blood of Jesus is precious. The blood of Jesus is perfect. The blood of Jesus is powerful. It's precious. Because there was no meeting point between Mary and Joseph before Jesus was born. Because Jesus was conceived of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was conceived of the Holy Spirit. God speak the word and Mary got pregnant by the power of the Spirit. And Jesus was delivered by the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, how can the Virgin deliver? Jesus was delivered by the power of the Holy Spirit. So his blood came from heaven. His blood is precious. And if that blood came from heaven, that blood is perfect. There is no disease in that blood. There is no contamination in that blood. There is no virus in that blood. No sickness in the blood of Christ. Please think about this. When you do the blood test, you can identify any sickness in your body just by doing blood tests. Any sickness in your body can be identified just by doing blood tests. They just they take your blood and the blood will tell them what kind of sickness is happening in your body at that particular time. That is how powerful blood is. <laughs> Now, what do you think can be the result of the blood test of Jesus? If they say we want to do the blood test of Jesus, the precious blood of Jesus, if we want to do the blood test of that blood from heaven, what can be the result? The result will show perfection. The result will show perfect in everything. There was no sickness in him. 
There was no disease in him. That's why the blood of Jesus is precious. It's a blood that came from heaven. It is also powerful. Have you forgotten the book of Revelation? And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. It is so powerful. Hey, it's the Lamb of God that have no sin. Him that had no sin was made to become sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. He had no sin. His blood had no sin. His blood had no contamination. That blood is powerful. His blood is powerful. That blood is powerful. The Bible says well, we are very far away from God. But when the blood came, the blood drew us near to God. The blood brought blood us closer to God. That blood is powerful. That's why nothing can pacify the anger of God but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can pacify the anger of God but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can pacify the anger of God but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can pacify. Anytime God sees the blood, he goes down. When God sees the blood, he remembers the sacrifice on the cross and he goes down. Nothing can pacify the anger of God except the blood of Jesus. And nothing can wash away anybody's sin except the blood of Jesus Christ. It's only that blood that can wash away my sin, that can wash away your sin. It is only the blood of Jesus. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Glory be to the Lamb of God. There was no meeting between Jesus and Mary before he was born. There was no meeting. Now, think about this. If a drop of blood of an HIV or AIDS victim, if a drop of their blood enters into your mouth or enters into your body or touches your blood, <laughs> It turns you immediately into a carrier of that disease. Somebody have HIV or have any kind of disease. Once their blood touches an open wound in your body and that blood touches you. Or maybe even or, <laughs> or their blood touches you anywhere and mixes up with your blood. Automatically the disease that they carry is transferred to you. You will become a carrier of the disease that that person is carrying. How much more the blood of Jesus. When you drink that blood by faith. When you drink that blood with understanding. When you drink the blood of Jesus with reference. There is a transfer of his divine nature. There is a transfer of his power. There is a transfer of his glory. There is a transfer of his eternal life into you. It's very clear. Somebody who has HIV or AIDS, his blood touches you, and immediately, even though you don't have AIDS, you, you contact it. If the blood of Christ enters into you, <laughs> you see the reason why we tell people to take the Holy Communion with understanding, with reference, and with faith. When you are taking the Holy Communion, oh my God. Release your faith and drink it as the blood of Christ. Don't say this is ordinary drink, this is ordinary bread. Eat it by faith. So that it can work for you. When you eat it with faith, it becomes the bread that came from heaven. It becomes the blood that came from heaven. And then it begins to walk the supernatural in your life. Somebody say amen. amen. Glory be to the love of God. Amen. So if the person that has a disease, his blood touches you. You, can't, you contact that disease. How much more? The same thing with the blood of Christ. If the blood of Christ enters into you, this is one thing that makes people like a man called Lester Summerall. Until he went to be with the Lord, the, man, the Bible said that the, they said the man was eating the Holy Communion every day. He was eating the Holy Communion every day of his life. Not only him, there are still so many of them in the world today that are feeding and feasting on the Holy Communion every day and the more they eat it with understanding the more they are bubbling with life no sickness, no disease, no affliction because they are partaking in this communion every day, daily 
No wonder God instructed them in the early church. He told them, as awful as you eat it, in the remembrance of me. And the Bible said, in the early church, do the things of the apostles. The Bible said that they were daily in breaking bread from house to house. Daily. They were breaking the bread daily. Daily. Every day. They were eating the communion. Daily. And as they were eating it, nobody was smacking anything. As they were eating, nobody was saying, I'm sick. As they were eating, everybody was bubbling with life. Because of the power in the blood of Christ. Somebody say, Amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. When you take the communion, you receive, number one, His divine nature. What is His divine nature? The nature of Jesus is a nature of love. His nature of faith. And everything you can see in the gift of the Spirit, Galatians chapter 5, all the fruits of the Spirit, gentleness, meekness, love, kindness, temperament, you know, temperance, you know, faith, patience, all those things are the nature of Christ. They are all packaged of his divine nature. And these are the things that he transferred into you once you partake in the Holy Communion. Once his blood enters into you. The Bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Once the blood stops flowing, the person is dead. Once the blood stops flowing, the person is gone. But once the blood is flowing, there is life. So what a joy, what an opportunity. Anytime you have an opportunity to eat the Holy Communion, to eat the bread of life, to eat the body of Jesus and to eat it, to drink his blood, it communicates it to you. Everything that Jesus carries, whoo, his faith, his power, eternal life, begin to bubble in you. Somebody say Amen. amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Yeah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. If there is any disease traceable through the blood, once you drink the communion, that sickness must die. If there is any sickness that is traceable through your blood, any blood disease, blood affliction, any kind of disease, because it is the blood that tells us the kind of sickness people are passing through. Whatever is sickness that is inside of you, once you partake in the blood of Christ, that sickness must die. The sickness must die. And tonight, every of such sickness and troubling anybody's body, troubling your soul, troubling your mind, troubling your body, tonight, that sickness will expire. It will expire. It will expire. It will expire in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Shout a believing Amen. Shout a believing Amen. I want to close it with on John chapter 6. Glory be to the love of God. John chapter 6. Woo, hallelujah. I'm feeling it here. I feel it here. I feel it here. I feel it here. I feel it here. John chapter 6. He will not let me down, he will not let me down, since I am in his hands, he will not let me down. He will not let me down. He will not allow me to fall. Hey, since I am in his right hand, he will not let me fall. Jesus, there's such an anointing in this place. There's such a glory in the house. John chapter 6 from verse 47. Remo Sahana Bradike Delekaha. John chapter 6 from verse 47. Please, wherever you are watching from, get ready your things for the communion. If you don't have coke, you don't have wine, you don't have anything, 
use water inside a cup and get some bread or biscuits for the communion. Hallelujah. It is your faith that matters. Release your faith on that water and let it be. See it as the blood. Release your faith on that bread. See it as the body of Christ. And eat with faith tonight. And I want to hear your testimony tomorrow. Glory be to the Lamb of God. John chapter 6, verse 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, and they are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread, says Jesus, the Son of God, which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever, and Jesus can never lie. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Hallelujah. The Jews therefore stood among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? <laughs> Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, you will have no life in you. If you are not a partaker of the Holy Communion, Jesus said you have no life. You are just living a dead life. You are just living a rickety life. You have no life in you. If you are not a partaker of the Communion. Glory be to God. Verse 54. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, please take note, eat it and drink it. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life. That is everlasting life. He can't die. And I will raise him up at the last day. Even after he has lived his life on the earth here and grown up 100 years, 120 years old, and then go to heaven, and, and then go to heaven, Jesus said, I'm going to raise him up. Hallelujah. What a promise. Believers don't die. They don't die. That's Jesus speaking. And Jesus cannot lie. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I read again. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up. That Jesus, he has authority. I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my body and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. When you eat, as you are eating the communion, Jesus is living in you and you are living in him. Hallelujah. As the living Father has sent me and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven. But as your fathers did eat manna and are dead, he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. This day said he in the synagogue as he taught them in Capernaum. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Very simple. You eat my flesh. You drink my blood, you have eternal life. You eat my flesh, you drink my blood, I will confront any kind of sin, any kind of disease. And whatever thing in your body, I will control all those things. Make sure that you live healthy. I will make sure you live healthy. I will make sure you live strong. I will conquer the worst of Satan and darkness that is troubling your life. If you eat my flesh, if you drink my blood, eat it with faith, eat it with reverence, eat it with understanding, and then I will take over from there. That's why I'm telling you that tonight, tonight is free indeed, completely freedom night, night of total freedom, free indeed, the Son of God. We set you free tonight. From every bondage, from every affliction, He is going to set somebody free tonight. Amen. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. As you are getting the things ready for the communion, I want to give somebody an opportunity. Tonight is your night. If you have not known the Lord Jesus, there is no need, particularly the communion. If you have not known Jesus, if you are still living in sin, there is no need partaking in the communion. You are wasting your life. You are wasting your time. You are wasting your time. 
If you are still living in unforgiveness and malice and bitterness against people, you refuse to forgive them. Don't bother eating the Holy Communion. It's to be destructive to your life and destiny. Don't do it. Don't do it. You must forgive before you come to the Lord's table. You must forgive. That is why we are going to do two altar calls tonight. The first one, those who want to give their life to Jesus and maybe they must lead because of challenges of life, but you want to return back to Jesus tonight. And then the second one are people that are harboring in their hearts bitterness. People have offended you for many years, for many months, or for many weeks, or even yesterday, people have offended you and you are still, you have not forgiven them. But tonight you want to forgive them, you want to let them go. We are going to make that altar call also tonight. Glory be to the Lamb of God. So if you are ready to give your life to Jesus tonight, wherever you are watching from, say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I thank you tonight. I believe you are the Son of the living God. I need you in my life. I need a Savior. Please forgive me my sin. Have mercy on me. Cleanse me from my sin and wash me with your blood. Make me a new person. Hallelujah. Make me a new creature. In Jesus' name. Amen. For the one that is now bastard and you're returning back, say, Father, I return back to you. I used to be a believer. I used to be born again. But I bastard. But Lord, tonight I come back. I come back to you. I'm back to you. Please have mercy on me, Daddy. Forgive me. Receive me back. Like a prodigal son, I return back to you. Please accept me and wash me with your blood. In Jesus' glorious name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And lastly, those that have unforgiveness and malice, this is not for unbelievers. I mean people who are children of God in the church. But you are bitter. Somebody offended you, but you don't just want to forgive. Tonight is your night. Do you know that a trumpet can sound anytime? Jesus can decide to come anytime. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, my dear, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, my brother or my sister or my friend or my mother or my father or my friend have offended me. Mention the name of that person to God. Say, Father, what these people did to me, I hate it. It's wrong. I'm bitter in my heart. But Father, I forgive them. I forgive them for what they have done to me. Because Jesus, you died on the cross for me. You forgave me my sin. I forgive my brother. I forgive my friends. I forgive everyone who offended me. Please, Lord, give me the grace not to hate them. Give me the grace to continue to live a life of love. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Now we can eat on the Lord's table. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. We are going to use that communion to pray. We're going to use it to pray. We're going to use it to pray. When, if you have the bread, you hold it in your hand with the drink. You hold it in your hand and then um, okay, we, to, we, let them, we will pray and then we take the communion. Yes, We pray and decrease some things and then we have the communion. Somebody say Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Let us see our targets again tonight. The targets. Anyone that have any have been injected virus into their body. Injected disease or virus into their body through the dream or through the physical in any area that they have injected evil things in them. You want to confront them by the authority, by the power of the blood. Hereditary sicknesses and ancestral disease flowing through our bloodline. We are going to not stop because of us alone, but wherever the source of that hereditary problem is coming from, we have to command the source to dry up. 
command it to rest so that other generations coming will not come to suffer it. Glory be to God. And the sickness or disease, by contact, by contact, by wearing dress or by anything, you contacted one disease or the other. The blood of Jesus will cleanse you off tonight. In the name of Jesus. And any sickness or disease that was fired like an arrow, tonight, as we take in the communion, the thing is going back to where it came from. It is going back to where it is coming from. Hallelujah. Amen. It is returning back to where it came from. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet in the name of the Lord. Baha. Shake up and go seek a young deliverer. Have you? Zilika Paco Proko take a Zen deliver that. Indiana Marodoko Sopra and Cassazi Vede Bede Bede Bede. Carana Marando Cobro no Cosisi Ketata. Yanamante Libre de Cusu Calabra di Baroda Suya. El que de Benedica Ambra do Cocusian de Brecatelo. Vita Parango Rosistia. I can't bring it to the group in Yanamahai. Play the keyboard. So the Eka to Primit, the Eka de Capacaluna. Sava Caprano Roro, Eka Lidi, Eprano Costetu, Rosukusuka, Capra de Vide, Yakata Branamacuri and the Rubo Cosucati. If a deadly part to see what the Leha de Barado. Glory be to the love of God. Glory be to the love of God. Glory be to the love of God. Somebody say, Father, in the name of Jesus, every virus, every disease injected in me or in the life of my loved ones, in the dream, every virus or disease or affliction injected into us through the dream. Right now, as I partake in this communion of the body and the blood of Jesus, let that sickness die. Let that disease be destroyed. Let that virus melt away. Let it melt away. Let it melt away. Let it melt away. Go ahead and begin to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, every affliction, anyone that is watching tonight, that is suffering any kind of satanic injected disease, satanic injected virus in their body through the dream, right now, by the blood of Jesus, by the authority, by the power of the Son of God. Let that disease die in the name of Jesus. Let that affliction die in the name of Jesus. Let that virus melt away, melt away, melt away, melt away, melt away, melt away, melt away. In the name of Jesus. Let it melt away, melt, melt away. Disease and virus and affliction. Wherever it has been injected in by the blood of Jesus, we neutralize it. We neutralize it. We neutralize the poison. We neutralize the poison. We neutralize the poison. We neutralize the poison. In the name of Jesus, let the poison die. The poison of witchcraft, we cause it. In the name of Jesus. 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 Let it be destroyed. Let it be destroyed. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Say every hereditary sickness. Every ancestral sickness or disease flowing through my bloodline, every hereditary sickness, ancestral sickness or disease flowing through our bloodline, tonight is your last night. I command your source to dry up. Go ahead and begin to pray. Let the source dry up. Let the source dry up. We apply the power in the blood. We apply the power in the blood of the cross. Let the source dry up. Let the source of that river, that river, that bloodline river, that bloodline river, that bloodline river, that bloodline river, river, that river of adversity, that river, blood of affliction, that blood disease, blood affliction, blood affliction, blood disease, that flow of the blood, satanic flow of the blood, blood river of the bloodline, and Extra blood river, hereditary blood river, dry up in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. We command your source to dry up, your source to dry, your source to dry, your source to dry in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Shout a living day, amen. amen. Shout a triumphant day, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Every Sickness or disease 
my contact today I command you to get out of our body in the name of Jesus get out of my blood get out of my body every sickness contacted whether through the air whether through the shaking of hands any sickness contacted to any means right now the blood of Jesus make me whole go ahead and begin to pray the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus make me whole by this communion any contact any disease contacted any affliction any disease contacted by any means the blood of Jesus makes you whole you are free indeed be free indeed by the blood by the blood, by the blood, let the sickness die, let the viruses die, let them think of any other. Ruma Kosobole Kusia Namahata, Shiteko Kapani Beyanda Lohaza, Kadaba Ruma Kosuke Yateli Mahadi. Let us die, let it melt away, like wax before the fire, let it melt away. The disease is gone, the disease is dried up. The sun is dried up in the name of Jesus. The son of the living God. Shout a believing amen. Shout a believing amen. Shout a believing amen. Somebody say, Father, any sickness, any disease, any infirmity, any insanity, fired against me, against my loved ones, right now, let it go back. Go back right now by fire. Return back to sender. Return back to sender in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to pray. Go ahead and begin to pray. Any sickness that is fired, fired like an arrow, arrow of sickness, arrow of insanity, arrow of infirmity. Return back to your center by the authority of the Son of God, by the decree of the Son of God, by the decree of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Every affliction fired like an arrow, disease fired like an arrow, bondage is fired like an arrow. Right now, go back to your center. Return, return, return. Return it all, it all, back to your center. As I take this communion, as I eat this flesh, and as I bring this blood, return back to center. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Son of the Living God. 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit. And in the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, This is my flesh. Eat in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. For as often as you eat this bread, you don't show the Lord's death until he comes. You can have the body of Christ. It with faith. Eat it with faith, eat with understanding. The bread of heaven. The bread of heaven. It was a body that was broken for you. His body was broken for you. His body was broken for you. So that your body will not be broken. So that your body will not be broken. His body was broken so that my body will not be broken. Hello. Take him in your understanding. Like Take him in your understanding. Your freedom is tonight. Your freedom is tonight. Your freedom is tonight. And after the same manner, after he has sought, Jesus Christ said, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This often drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you drink this cup you don't show the lost death until he comes we receive this communion from his blood of the blood <laughs> the precious blood the perfect blood the powerful blood as you eat it anything causes sickness in your body must die tonight 
must die tonight. Hallelujah. Take the coffin. Take the coffin. Take the coffin. Drink the blood. Sin and sorrow, the blood of Jesus sets me free. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus sets me free. From sin and sorrow, the blood of Jesus set me free. We are going to give God an offering tonight, a special offering tonight. To appreciate the Lord for the blood, for the what the Lord has done tonight. Give with joy, give with excitement. Tonight you are free indeed. Free from sickness, free from sin, free from affliction, free from the works of the devil and darkness. You are free indeed. You are free indeed. You are free indeed. You are free indeed. Those that are watching online in the name of the Lord, you can give through your phone or your iPad or anywhere. You are going to see the financial details and give. Hallelujah. The Lord is going to do a remarkable thing in your life. I want to hear your testimonies of what Jesus has done. The Son of God is the one that has the power to set us free. He's the only one that can set us free. Free from your fear. Free from that affliction. You are free tonight. You are free tonight. You are free tonight. Free from every bondage. Free from every affliction. You are free tonight. You are free tonight. You are free tonight. You are free tonight. The Lord bless you as you give. The Lord accept the offering as you give. The Lord accept the seed you are sowing as you give. We are in the season of the supernatural harvest. Hallelujah. As you give, expect to receive from the Lord. Receive from the Lord. Receive from the Lord. This is your night. I would like you to go back and watch this video again. Watch this message again. Watch this message again. The Son of God will speak to you. The Holy Ghost will speak to you. He will confirm the word in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Abba Father. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Glory be to the name of the Lord. We follow you, Father. Lord, accept everyone that is giving tonight. Bring them at the point of their need. Solve their problems. Give them a supernatural harvest. Give them a rapid response to every seed that they have sown. Bless them in return. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. On Sunday, we are live again on Sunday at 9.30 in the morning. Early in the morning. 9.30 in the morning. In Ireland, Irish time, 9.30 in the morning. Join us. You will never remain the same. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Cause his face to shine upon you. Give you his peace. Lift up his countenance upon you and your family. Enjoy the liberty that God has given to you tonight. Enjoy your freedom. Enjoy your freedom. You will not lose this miracle. If something has been imparted into you, you will not lose it. You will not be seated. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the love of God. And the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. God bless you. See you on Sunday, 9 30 in the morning. Foundation Ministries, Libre. God bless you. Good night and God bless. Bye bye.